All right, welcome everyone to the Career Ready from a Distance uh, webinar today. I'm Jewel Clark with the San Diego County Office of Education, uh, and I'm excited to have you here as we all work uh, to address some of our common problems of practice. Um, as I said a moment ago, we will be recording today, um, and so I'll address as if we're recording, but you're all welcome to pipe in with any questions, comments, ideas, um, resources, and all of the like. So um, maybe we can start by getting a feel for who is on the call, um, if you wouldn't mind um, introducing yourself. So maybe um, we can start with Dave. Can you hear me? I can. Hi, I'm uh, sitting here at home trying to figure out what I'm going to do for distance learning. Great, great. Thank you. Eileen? She might be away from hers. Uh, Jamie? Um, hi, yeah, I'm Jamie Davenport from the Grossmont Union High School District. I'm the curriculum specialist there. Perfect. And Jennifer? Hi, I'm Jennifer Kay. I work for Sia Tech Charter High School. It's a high school for um, 16 to 24 year olds who are doing hybrid online learning anyways, but usually we are at site and I am the CTE counselor. Perfect. And um, before we start, are there any, I know Dave actually did email me a couple of questions and I think I already had a couple of slides in that might connect with that and I can follow up too, but is there anything big that you are really grappling with at this point as you start working on uh, this, this uh, challenge? Well, the biggest problem I have is all my classes are designed for people on site. It's a hands-on learning environment using specific industry software and all our kids have Chromebooks. And uh, I was just reading a letter from our superintendent. We're not sure if we're going back on April 14th or not, but to do distance learning in my classes requires quite a, quite a bit of work to make it viable. And not, not, I'm just questioning the viability of that. Uh, specifically robotics, computer science, and graphic arts. Great. Yeah, and I think that the, the hardware that the students have access to sounds like um, perhaps one of the largest challenges when you're uh, trying to give students really rigorous CTE um, options. Yeah, and I don't want to introduce a, a product that's a one-off that we've never done it in class, and then we're just going to do it for distance learning. And my other concern, frankly, is I have a lot of kids with IEPs mm -hmm. and a lot of ELD kids, and I'm not so sure how successful, I hate to be so down on myself, but I'm not so sure how successful I'm going to be meeting the needs of an IEP student as well as the language barrier with a, because um, not all these products have a Spanish component. Absolutely. And um, although I don't have a ton of resources baked into this particular set of slides, um, I can also follow up. I know that the um, federal government released a short webinar on making things online more accessible. Um, and so I'll make sure that that gets on our resource page. Um, and then um, also, particularly because in CTE with 15 different sectors, each one is going to have such unique challenges. Um, I am just have a zoom open every day from one to two so um dave it might be a good idea for you and i to have a one-on-one -on -one at that at that point sometime next week um to look more specifically at um those areas uh, but i was on a call earlier today where some people who do robotics work said that there's maybe some simulators and so um they're actually going to follow up on that with me um later on and your question had um started that for me to to look into that so um, please keep questions coming, and if I can find the answers, I, I will do my best. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have uh, anything that they want to throw out into the universe before we begin? All right. Great. Um, Dave, I'm going to go ahead and mute you, but then uh, if you have any questions anytime, um, there's also, if you can unmute and break in, and there's also like a hand raising function in Zoom. So that's sometimes even as a small group, it's nice to practice so that if you switch and start using it with your students, um, but you can under more, you can um, like raise your hand and it pings me. Um, Eileen, did you have something to share? Oh, I think I was just able to get unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, as a district, we're trying to figure out and kind of wrap our minds around how if we do go to distance learning, 
after April 13th, how we can do that for CT. Because like you mentioned, all the diverse needs that we have and all the different programs. So we're just looking for ideas and how we could help Perfect. get our teachers trained. Yes, absolutely. All right, well, and this is kind of just a broad overview because like you, I am jumping in, uh, trying to just pull together as many resources as I can. Um, and then based on what people need, I'll pull together more uh, webinars or resources or meetings and um, we can go from there. So um, you'll see here some of the resources and the links. So I think most of you found the CTE distance link um, and I continue to add resources as they come across my desk. Um, and then if you're looking for distance learning resources in general, the um, SDCOE COVID-19 site has a ton of great resources, um, particularly around just distance learning. What are some of the tools, the software, recommendations, things that are no cost um, uh, along those lines. Uh, and SDCOE will be hosting every day for the forthcoming future in the morning webinars that really um, touch specifically on all of these tools individually. Uh, and so you can find those. I have the link somewhere, so I'll post that into the, to the group chat um, if you are looking for some of those. Um, so I will track that down uh, by the end of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. So uh, the state has also released some supporting materials around distance learning. And I think this particular diagram is helpful in helping us to see many options of distance learning, but also really think about um, the variety of things that we can do for students and the level of kind of um, academic rigor that comes along with each one. So of course the top um, would be teacher interaction and assistance through online learning platform. Um, but if we don't have the technology in place and the software in place, um, we can also start beginning to look at what it looks like to have students working virtually at home, um, to have students it, at this point, it's um, we are not opening schools to have the distance, uh, the social distancing um, here in California, but you might see that in other places. Um, and then, you know, if we have students who do not have access to any of those, paper packets are an option. Um, I did read on the CDE website that um, although we do have these legal requirements to provide education, um, they're not mandating that every student has exactly the same. So just because there's a few students who might not have access to technology doesn't mean that we can't provide it um, a technology-based piece while we work to, to bring access to those students. Um, and so uh, at this point, just remember, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. Um, also take care of yourself and don't spend 10 hours a day trying to set up distance learning because we know that takes a lot of time uh, and so as you go through this uh, keep that in mind as well um, if you um, are looking for my slides they're again at this uh, bit.ly slash cte distance and um, and you can follow along there or access them uh, later on so the first thing you want to think about too when you're looking at distance learning is what is the scope of learning that you're um, asking of your students uh, right now a lot are um, a lot of students are are really in an enrichment phase and part of that is the lack of accessibility i know uh, dave you mentioned that at the beginning that not every student has access to the same level of technology or there may be students with ieps for whom a chromebook doesn't meet their learning needs um, and so at this point, a lot of times what we're doing is we're giving optional ways for students um, to engage with learning that may or may not be graded at some point, depending on the district and what they've outlined. As we look at the potential of having no school between now and summer, um, I'm sorry, not no school, but no in-person school, um, I believe that will shift. Um, Eileen, like you were talking about, that we may um, be moving towards um, really needing to have instruction uh, that can be graded along the way. Um, at this point, what are your, it looks like we have, you know, three different organizations represented. What, what are you looking at as far as what you're asking of your students at this point for each one of you? And everyone's on mute, so don't forget to unmute yourself. So we are, um, like I said, we're an online online hybrid school, anyways. So all of their coursework is online, anyways. Mm -hmm. But we usually we do require them to be with us three to four days a week, hypothetically. 
Yeah. But um, they're used to doing online Google Classroom stuff. Um, obviously, when it comes to labs and things like that, that's not happening right now. Um, I know some teachers are kind of doing them online or again with some virtual links and things like that. But we're only a week in, so that's all we know right now. Okay, so you're, because you're primarily online, you're able to maintain the required instruction for your students, um, I would guess then. So yeah, hypothetically, um, for our IEP students, we have a special ed person who's checking in with them. Okay. Um, and we're doing some, you know, Google Hangout, you know, FaceTime, whatever that looks like, um, you know, to support students that way if we need to. Perfect, thank you. On the Grossmont District, we aren't doing any instruction right now and we won't be doing any until about april 13th so we're trying to figure out how we can make this work and get teachers trained so that they're ready to go and see what it's going to look like but things keep changing so quickly we're still trying to figure things out absolutely um are you offering enrichment opportunities right now or are you focused more on teacher professional learning it's more enrichment. Some teachers are checking in with their students and some are putting things out there that are making um, instruction enrichment available, but nothing is being graded mm -hmm. at this time. Um, AP is just putting out some study materials to get students ready for AP exams and the guidelines for that. So we're trying to figure that out right now too. Yeah, but, I saw the post today that AP exams will be available uh, for students to take from home this year. So that's, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Going to be very interesting. <laughs> so my, you know, all of us at the district level are trying to figure out how we can make this work. Um, we have people in our technology area that are trying to figure out what kind of platform we're going to use for distance learning and how we are going to go about doing teacher training and trying to figure out the logistics of everything. Great. Yep. I think everyone's in a similar place. So the more, um, you know, as people do come to either decisions or honing in on options, the more we can share um, what has worked for us in the past uh, in the community of um, CTE and education in general, the better. So thank you. Out here at uh, Mountain Empire, uh, I, am, I am the teacher and I am the coordinator at all in one job. And I have two other CTE teachers. We've been talking about uh, doing screencastify so that a person could replay the video as often as they need that might take care of a, an IEP or an ELD person mm -hmm. so that it's not just a one-time shot it's sitting out there we all use uh, Google Classroom to one degree or another even with uh, graphic arts or robotics I just ha just have to use perhaps a different platform to submit the file through Classroom but uh, I think a combination of Castify or some video recording of the lesson. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how often a, an assignment will be out there. In other words, are we really assuming kids are going to visit your classroom site three days a week out of five? Or, you know, we don't really know mm -hmm. if everybody's going to be just hitting their classes randomly during the day or the week. So we still need, as a school, need to figure out what we're going to expect from students so that we know what teachers have to do. Absolutely. Yeah, I think those are that's where a lot of uh, the leadership um, is trying to figure out right now. I know um, superintendents are meeting fairly regularly um, to address um, problems of practice. So um, hopefully uh, as we get into I think part of the question is, is at what point will a decision be made whether we come back or we don't come back? Um, because uh, if we're not coming back, it, it becomes much more um, urgent that we create learning experiences for all of our students that um, that contribute to them and the growth that they need in order to move on to the next uh, school year. Uh, and so, you know, that that becomes the question of is it synchronous, asynchronous and all of that. So we'll get into some of those uh, in this um, file, uh, slideshow as well. So um, so as you're thinking about the technology side, it's I know some um, districts have said you know, they're checking in with every student to make sure, you know, any student that you're not able to get a hold of, what is the barrier? And then again, I see Jennifer has put in the, um, some of the Wi-Fi access. There are a lot of um, organizations and companies uh, providing um, access. So it then becomes our role as educators to say, I haven't heard from the student. 
try to create, um, you know, connect with them in another way and see if that's the barrier for them. So um, hopefully in the next week, as we all kind of transition, that all students can get internet access. Um, and, and so we can also identify uh, if there are limitations as to what kinds of um, computers they have, right? As you said, Chromebooks aren't quite cutting it when it comes to a lot of the CTE. So um, as far as software goes, this actually links to our SDCOE COVID-19 page. Under educators, there are a lot of resources as far as what software does what, um, as well as um, links to help you understand the software. Zoom has graciously um, removed their 40 minute limit for free accounts for educators uh, for the near future. And so if you go to Zoom, and if your school's not yet registered, you, there's a process to do that. Um, and then they'll remove the 40 minute limit uh, so that you can use Zoom. And actually, if I was all by myself in the Zoom right now, which if no one had logged in, I would have just done the whole thing um, because that's almost like a way to do a screencast um, because as I record it, then I'll get the file at the end and I can use that just like if I had done Screencastify or something like that. So um, Zoom is another option when you're looking at screencasting whether you have, um, if you have students in your Zoom and their names are there, that's when you need to be careful about if you have um, their, their likeness or their name that you're not sharing that on a public link. Um, and again, I think Dave, you hit this right on the, the nail on the head when you were talking about how much time students are spending and when they're spending, you know, will you set up, you know, an hour by hour schedule like regular school um, for synchronous learning where you're all working together or not? Um, and then um, the other piece is what is your capacity? So as an educator, what, where do you feel comfortable? Where do you feel what we say in the stretch zone where you're like, okay, I can figure this out. Um, and where do you move into the panic zone? Because we really want teachers um, to feel comfortable or just even in the stretch zone as they get into providing distance learning um, and not feel completely, you know, lost, overwhelmed, or in the panic zone. Uh, so if you or your colleagues are in that, in that space, um, you know, that reach out for help um, and we'll be happy to, to do as much as we can. Um, also remember, everything's subject to change. The governor could, could change um, anything at any time. Um, and so even if right now you're only looking at enrichment, um, it is very likely that that could shift to the need for uh, required instruction. Um, and really, I think when we talk about CTE and when we talk about whether it's enrichment or um, distance learning in general, one of the things I think in CTE we address the best is this idea of the value of learning for our students. Um, and so in order to ensure our students are logging on and participating and things like that, the more that we can put a strong value on their learning and give them a feel that they're really um, have momentum for their learning, the better will be. Uh, and so I just, you know, I, I know I've been watching some of the social media posts from our students and students are often posting how to look like you're actually engaged on a Zoom. Um, and so students who don't want to be engaged have an easier time in doing that. Uh, so uh, engagement is a really important component of distance learning. Um, and so I just scoped out a few different pieces um, when we're talking about focus areas for distance learning. Um, I think the first one that's kind of low hanging fruit um, as we all get used to the, to the online learning space is around career readiness. So how do you utilize um, opportunities to do career exploration, portfolio development, resume workshop, um, while you and your students are getting used to that platform um, and, and so that the, there's um, learning happening, but maybe not like the level of rigor and the level of, of need for technology that you would have to get into for some of the technical side. Um, and then as you get into online coursework, it's things around like virtual class time, flipped learning. Um, I know some districts are looking into online certifications. Um, and then also just where can we give students an opportunity to build out projects related to their CTE class. Um, so I have some resources for that. Um, and again, as we think about this, I also consider the standards for career ready practice. Um, as we are um, working through it, it may be another place to have kind of those earlier opportunities to get used to the platforms and used to the technology. Um, as 
to be honest, students being able to um, work virtually is definitely a transferable skill. Uh, and so how do we um, leverage the new need to um, work virtually uh, in order to prepare our students for a workplace where that might be a reality. Um, all right, so here are some things around career readiness. Also, does anyone have anything they want to chime in on as I drone away here? Okay, great, thanks. Um, all right, so the first, I just have a couple of slides for each just to give um, teachers ideas on um, what you might start out with. So, you know, when you get into career exploration, just even having students do a profile of each priority sector and perhaps what careers in their pathway connect to that. Um, so like when you're talking about IT, those fall into every priority sector. And so how do you say like, well, what does IT look like in the healthcare industry? And what are the challenges there? Um, what does IT look like in manufacturing? And what are the challenges there? And so that the students start getting a feel for all of the different sectors um, and understanding some of the local job growth. Um, and then I think another way to give students kind of assignments or things that are around career exploration um, would be a career spotlight. So choosing a career, um, particular career they're most interested in and creating the spotlight highlighting, you know, what kinds of educational requirements uh, get you there, really looking at what are the entry level positions that feed into those, um, because we've seen so often our students don't have that understanding of kind of a trajectory in the career field. Um, that we, you can have students do many presentations, videos, screencasts, build infographics um, around both of these topics. And so that might be one way to kind of initiate some of your distance learning where you're pulling in a bit more career exploration so that everyone gets more used to the platform that you're working from. Um, I've included a few resources here that are helpful. Um, and let's see if I can uh, connect via Zoom or if that throws us off a little bit. Um, I don't see my little green box around this. Oh, there's the green box, great. Um, so for instance, career trees um, are something that we've been seeing a lot more at conferences. And so it's really like, okay, here are the things that, that feed into that career. And then you see the entry level technical and professional careers and there are career trees for so many different sectors. Um, and you'll find more than one right here is a uh, digital media um, as an example. So you can have students explore different careers at different levels. So career trees are something that I've seen recently that could be a nice um, exploration for students. Um, and then they might be able to do a spotlight on one of the careers they pull out. Um, also center of excellence posters are a great place. Uh, for students to get um, regional uh, data on our jobs. And so, um, you know, give them opportunities to explore these resources. You may be able to also find articles about things like this along the way. Um, another piece is to have them start building out certain career pathway plans um, and give them a challenge to create multiple branches for their pathway plan. So what high school coursework do they still need? What are maybe two different post-secondary paths into that sector, including academics, certifications, and degrees? So for instance, okay, you're, what would it look like if you went to two-year college? Uh, what, you're, what would it look like if you went to a four-year college um, and, and to end up into that sector? Um, and have them really think about the variety of skills needed to manage uh, that pathway. So what are the essential or soft skills or the technical skills that are part of it? Um, another piece of the puzzle, if you, whether or not you have portfolios already in place, this is a great chance for students to explore what a portfolio might look like and to build resources or pieces into their portfolio. So again, it's the idea of like, what is the value of the work that we ask our students to do? What's the value of their of their learning. Um, and so if you can help them see, you know, this is an opportunity, just like a professional might spend this actual time where they have at home, um, considering, you know, what, what, how they present themselves and working on their own projects to post, um, that our students can be doing the same thing. Um, and so as educators, if we can curate um, outstanding student and professional portfolios for students to look at, um, have students explore portfolios, focus on portfolio pieces uh, and then there can be opportunities for feedback uh, and so this is another way where it doesn't have to be quite as 
directed in learning um, and it lets us as educators take a step back and let our students show um, their own uh, work uh, and and give them that feel that it, this is you're making something that's bigger than right now and it's bigger than your teacher but it can represent you as you head into the world of work um, one nice way to do that is to uh, go through the essential skills of the world of work um, and so we usually see those as the four c's um, as well as initiative and self-management workplace context and culture um, just so you all know i am also working with san diego workforce partnership on a relaunch of the essential skills that was actually supposed to come out yesterday but i believe that's all delayed um, and so you'll see something very similar but uh, i think that there's a couple of language changes um, and our hope is to launch more classroom resources in the fall around essential skills um, but one nice way to build a portfolio is to say okay well what does critical thinking look like and how have you um, grown in that and how students take a project to represent their work uh, in some of these essential skills. Um, and then finally, um, building a resume is a great uh, project for students to work on from home. It's going to be really specific to them, so it's a little bit harder to cheat uh, because that will be a concern when we get into uh, fully digital learning. Um, SDCOE, our work-based learning team, has uh, developed some workshops for educators to better uh, teach things like resume writing. And actually, that is our first work-based learning uh, workshop, which comes this Monday at 2. So you can register now either through this link or um, on our distance learning resources page. Um, so that's the kind of overview of some ideas around career exploration. Does anyone have any of their own ideas or questions uh, in that section of the slides? Pardon me, Jill, did you say this slideshow we're looking at is available to us? Was that the bit.ly? Yes. So if you go back to the distance learning resources under CTE distance, right. I actually added the slides um, a little bit before the presentation. So if you want, let me copy this. Um, and I'll drop this in here. Um, so that's the, um, the resources, but if you want the slides directly, here are the slides. So that you can click alongside. So I know a lot of you, your teachers have probably already done a lot of this work because we are towards the end of the year. Um, but again, it might be a way to um, get students and teachers more comfortable with the learning platform to launch um, some of this. So any other comments or questions on that piece before we get into the other pieces? I was just wondering if you guys have done any research. Um, I haven't had time this week, but how are colleges um, enrolling kids right now? Um, I think most colleges already do have a learning management platform that they use um, are you talking about current students or are you talking about students for the fall? I guess, let me clarify that question. Yeah, probably students for the fall. We have a couple that are getting ready to graduate and we were gonna help them through transition plans, but now what? <laughs> that is a great question. I don't have the answer to that, um, but I can also um, connect you with our counselor coordinator and um, that would be something that I'm sure that people are really interested in. Um, hearing more about. I'm guessing that just like we're not really sure what we're doing, um, the colleges are in the same boat. Um, and hopefully once we get, right now their priority is likely current students. Uh, we know, you know, that like SDSU gave students one day to move out unless they had some kind of reason to waiver that. So they've got a lot going on in the college side. Um, and, and we're not, I know I heard a NPR uh, this week that colleges are, you know, starting to first think about what summer session impacts will have and then um, still unsure about what continued um, concern will be occurring in the fall. So um, I will definitely ping my counselor colleague around that. That's a great question. All right. Um, so when we get into online coursework, um, there's a few just overview of thinking about the difference between synchronous and asynchronous learning. 
and what that means. Um, and so when we talk about synchronous learning, that means like synchronized swimmers, we're all doing the same thing at the same time. And so that usually means something like this where everyone's logged in together, we can have conversations um, and we can go through, so this could be something that you used to explain or describe assignments, you can provide direct instruction. Um, you can give students opportunities to give each other feedback and in Zoom there actually are breakout rooms. Um, and so, you know, that's something else, like if you're about to use Zoom for the first time and you wanna like all, all Zoom with you and we'll break in and out of rooms <laughs> if you would like to practice those. Um, you might not realize, but Zoom also has things like, I can use this pointer to show you different pieces. I can also um, have uh, different, let's see, there are options for polling. There are options, if I do a new share, which you can't see what I'm doing right now, but I can switch over to a whiteboard. And so now um, I can actually um, use my mouse to draw with my terrible art skills. Um, and I can save or whatever it is um, on that. So that's also something that is an option uh, as we look at that. Let me reshare the slides. Um, but if you're looking at, you know, particularly Zoom, I have a lot of comfort with Zoom and I can um, be of assistance wherever that is. Um, and if you're looking at something else and I can help out, just let me know. Um, I would not recommend that you just run a class. I would recommend a combination of synchronous and what we call asynchronous learning or kind of flipped lessons um, to give students some flexibility uh, along the way. So here you talk about, okay, what is the percentage of time I wanna spend like one-on-one -on -one with all of our faces? And then we can move into what we call asynchronous learning, which I think of kind of that flipped model where sometimes we're not all together. And when we look at asynchronous learning, it may feel more like a playlist of learning that students can complete at their own pace. Um, and so, you know, like you had mentioned Screencastify and they're actually offering a free upgrade for um, the month of April for educators um, with this coupon code CAST underscore COVID. Um, and so you can get a freer, or a upgrade of your free version of Screencastify. Um, and like I said, you can also use Zoom for this. And, um, and that's one of the ways that, that you might be able to do that depending on what you're uh, most comfortable with as well. Um, basically, when you're talking about asynchronous learning and you're thinking about how much time you want a student to spend um, on your class, first of all, because we're high school, we have to remember that they will have six levels of whatever it is, right? They're at home, but if they have six teachers who are all fulfilling um, class requirements, then they'll have six times whatever you're creating. Um, and also there may be um, difficulties because even though there might be devices at home, when you have multiple people and everyone is all working and learning from home, um, bandwidth might be lower, uh, there may not be enough devices to go around. Uh, and so it is, it, it may not feel like you're able to provide the same amount of learning as you would in a, a classroom. And as we all get used to it, we may be able to increase that, but just consider um, some of the barriers that our students are up against. Um, and that's just if they're healthy, um, because of course, if they um, do have illnesses in their family, uh, whether it's COVID-19 related or not, um, that, that that may also alter their ability to work. Um, so really what you're looking at is compiling these digital resources and assignments. Um, you can find some articles. Um, if, if you, we're going to learn something in the regular world, right? No matter what, which actually applies really well to CTE, you're gonna to go to YouTube, right? We go to YouTube, our students go to YouTube. Um, I decided I was gonna change a light in my bathroom. What did I do? I went to, I went to YouTube. Um, and so don't hesitate to use resources that are already out there and kind of create a playlist. All right, students, you're gonna read this article, you're gonna do this assignment, you're going to watch a video, you're gonna you know, record a response to that. Um, you may find, depending on your subject area, that Khan Academy also has a lot of really um, high quality educational content 
um, as well. Um, and then also CTE Online has a ton of resources that are all digital because that's how you download them. Um, I'm working on uh, this coming Tuesday actually doing a webinar that kind of focuses on CTE Online and how to pull together a lesson plan. Um, and so uh, as I also look forward to what that will look like, I hope that you can join me there. Uh, I'm, I'm building the, the plane as it goes. Um, and so please just keep me posted if there's topics you'd like to see, I can also address those. Um, and then you can create virtual assessments. So um, right now, if you're looking for um, some schools already have a learning management system or LMS. So LMS is something like Canvas or Google Classroom or Blackboard. These are ways for people to um, actually provide kind of that playlist of learning within a digital platform and then students can go through, they can submit things. If you do not have a labor, uh, learning management system, your district is likely working on it right now. Um, but in the meantime, you can have students email you um, assignments. You can use Google Forms, actually has a quiz option. Um, but students are really good at communicating with each other. So um, unfortunately, we also need to be thinking about you know, what does that mean for, um, for our students to make sure that they're not cheating and that they're actually giving us the learning that they have. Anyone else have um, resources or thoughts around flipped learning or asynchronous learning? I have one thought that I just started using and uh, I'll throw it out there, Pear Deck. Yeah. Where you can make great. your Google Slides, make your Google Slides interactive. Yeah, I will add that to the resources. I really like Pear Deck. Um, if you haven't used it, it has very interactive slides while you're giving, so while you're giving the presentation, then people um, can use their own device to answer questions or interact with the slides in different ways. Um, when I was in the classroom, I actually did flip my learning and then I was gonna put, so I'll just, this has been like five or six years, so it's a little bit old, but this was my old um, website and I, we didn't have a learning management system, um, and really it was just my honor students who would um, watch things at home. But, um, and if anyone's su supporting chemistry teachers, I have a ton of resources in here that I developed back uh, when I taught chemistry. Um, but if you look at certain units where um, I would have almost like a playlist, and this is a little bit old, but you know, things around vocabulary, rubrics, um, table of contents, here's a booklet that they had to do, here's a lecture on isotopes and average atomic mass, um, and then they had to do this periodic table activity. So it almost becomes like a playlist. So you can just create, um, for lack of anything else, a Google Doc that has like, here's your week of XYZ, here's your playlist, right? So if you're really overwhelmed and there are not all these other options, then this would be a great um, option. Uh, Jennifer, are you using Schoology? I see that you um, suggested that in the group's chat. Yeah, so we use Schoology and so do my um, own personal kids and they're in Menifee um, Union School District. They use Google Classroom as well, but I heard that you mentioned that one. Yeah, yeah. And I will say, luckily, we have a whole team who is putting together resources around this. So. Um, on the distance learning page, if you haven't been to the COVID-19 site for SDCOE, you'll also find, um, like I'm focused so much on trying to find CTE specific pieces because if you go to distance learning here, you'll find, um, well, let's go with uh, educator resources. Right here too, it'll say like distance learning best practice, using technology, free online tools. So you pull the standard, it'll give you um, lists. I think one thing that educators are saying right now is uh, it's very overwhelming because there's so much. Uh, and so as we're trying to curate, you know, what's the right thing for our students? Oh, again, here's like a whole bunch of resources for stu students with disabilities. So Dave, that might be helpful. Um, so as we, as we look here, um, there's a lot of resources on our website. The CDE has also um, come out with additional resources. Um, happily, they linked to us as a great spot for um, discipline specific resources. So hopefully that means um, we're doing something right. Um, but as you come to the COVID-19 SDCOE site, um, you can get a lot more on the technical side um, as well. 
Perfect. Um, these are some resources that um, I find to be really useful in general in CTE and many of the assignments because they're um, like a Word doc or a PDF, then you may be able to easily push them out to your students as well. Um, I went through and the community college actually has some great um, websites that were originally created by their deputy sector navigators and seem to still be kept up for the most part by their um, by their regional directors, which is um, the new terminology. Anyway, so if you go to like this, right, we have one place like, how do you do auto shop from home? <laughs> like that's really difficult to do. Um, but this actually does have resources where you might find um, a lot of videos, um, things about careers. They, um, they do have a conference, so maybe they'll turn that, and it's in Temecula, so maybe they'll turn that virtual if it's not in person. Um, but if you go under faculty, you'll actually find on this one a whole bunch of K-12 resources and curriculum. So for each um, sector, I, I did just connect with one of the sector people at the state because I had a question about the link that they had shared. Um, but they're also looking at releasing more um, resources and I will keep them up to date as I get a hold of them. Um, but these are great resources and a lot of it is online. Anyone have any favorite um, CTE resources that are, are not here that you would like or you think that I should add? Okay, no one's unmuting. So I'm guessing that that means that this seems at least thorough enough for now. Um, as you come across things that you find helpful and you're sending out to your team, if you send them my way, then I can add them again to this distance learning uh, today, when I came across those resources, I um, added them to this grid. Uh, so this should be dynamic and changing um, as we go. Um, again, the CTE distance is our distance learning uh, resource page for us to see we um, Another area is online certifications. Um, they may be available in your sector. I will be doing a little bit more work to track down what these might look like. I'm hoping maybe that could be something we can do with the CTE Leaders Network. Um, but uh, consider in your sector, are there online certifications or even general ones? If you had all of your CTE students go through and do Google certifications, that might be a great way for them to build resumes. Um, and there are few careers where that's not a helpful um, certification to have on, on their resume. All right, finally, some things around project ideas um, and just resources to get you thinking about more than just day-to-day -day instruction. Um, I have a ton of general project-based learning resources at this um, short link bit.ly slash capital PBL lowercase sdcoe. Um, and if I find more that are distance learning friendly, I will add those. Um, but one thing that you might think about is a 20% project. Um, and so it might end up being a 100% project for this last 20% of the year. Um, but what 20% projects came out of industry where they really wanted to give um, some of their um, employees an opportunity to just really pursue something they're passionate about because you end up putting a lot more of your energy into them. Um, and so there are some great articles out if you Google 20% projects around, um, you can have students propose what their project look like. They may have deliverables that are required along the way in presentations, but if you can have, have a way to give the freedom of choice, it may allow your students to be more engaged. And also, the less we can have where there's one specific answer, um, the less likely it is that um, students will find a way to collaboratively do work, whereas um, all answers are the same. What you'll have is all of them texting, you know, what is the answer for number three? Um, and so as the more that you can get them engaged in their passion as it aligns with your particular sector, um, the more likely that you'll have um, really meaningful work coming from students as they work from home. You may also get them uh, engaged in video projects. I, um, our students are really into video, um, as you know. Uh, you know, YouTube is almost passe. They're using TikTok. Um, if you are on TikTok, today, this week I posted uh, a TikTok that's a, 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 um, a challenge around like career ready challenge. And so I may have a series of those that our students can engage with if that's something that you um, want to send them towards. Uh, I know our, 
Patrick Giddes, who's our, um, our assistant soup of innovation, um, was really hoping to, to push us all into the TikTok space. And so um, I have made one post, but if you can, um, you know, you don't want to encourage students to necessarily post um, publicly on TikTok or online, um, but you could use something like um, um, Flipgrid, which is a excellent video kind of mini snippet um, educational tool where students make a little video response. You say, we're doing a Flipgrid, make a TikTok style response. So it could be as short as that. Um, or you can have them use Screencastify and do a presentation. You can have them um, create those YouTube style how-to videos um, while they're working with things. Um, you can have them develop micro documentaries onto your sector. So there's a lot of kind of bigger ideas that you could um, consider in that space. And finally, um, my favorite graphic design tool is Canva. I use it like crazy. I don't pay a penny for it. Um, and you can make a ton of things. So I'm going to click on this and you'll see whatever crazy things I have made recently, which vary um, a lot of times. So if you look at um, some of my designs, um, along the way, it might be from a bookmark to things around industry sectors. I created um, some other things, but what you can have your students do, um, oh, and this was a, a STEM teacher meetup where we had a flight of questions, um, but you can have your students actually create infographics and things like that in Canva. It's a very easy interface, um, and so I know that you may not want students to make something new, but I can use Canva on my phone, on my tablet, and on my computer. It's all web-based. Um, and so it's very easy to, you know, move things around, um, to add something, an element to um, whatever it is. And so across sectors, you can have um, people, um, students do this kind of work. Um, and I'm going to undo all the things that I did to this document um, before I leave. So Canva is a really easy program. Um, and so even if you're having students learn a new program, it might be worthwhile. You can have them develop a marketing campaign for a small business. Uh, it's a great place to build a diagram with, with technical specifications and you can upload images into Canva so you don't have to only depend on the images that they have um, in, in Canva itself. Um, have students build infographics in any sector. It's a great way for them to share information, to work with data, and to really think about how we communicate um, things within our sector to the public. Um, and you can even think back to when I talked about the career spotlight and the career pathway plan, um, some of the, those they could create in Canva or a similar um, online free interface uh, for, for that. Um, so that was just kind of a brain dump of a place to start um, for teachers who might feel a little bit overwhelmed. Um, so let me just open it up to questions, concerns, requests. Um, where is everybody at, uh, at this point? Um, Jewel? Yes. I just want to make sure I was unmuted before I started talking. Um, I love the ideas. Um, and, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking about all the different ways that we could apply this. Um, I think what I'm struggling with as, you know, representing the district is how we get the teachers trained and trained quickly because we're not going to have a lot of time to get the stuff going. Yeah, and um, do you know what your LMS is or if you're going to be using like Zoom or another um, interface? We're exploring that right now. Um, that's one of the things I was working on today is like the using the Google tools and the Hangouts and that kind of stuff and also looking at Zoom. So we're still in the initial stages of that and what that will look like. Um, Tiffany Brown is our technology person, so she's looking at different things and trying stuff out. Um, but as we keep getting new information and different timelines and stuff, it's like she works on one thing and then it gets changed and then she's working on different things. So I think we're still in crisis mode and trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. And next week we'll be having um, those distance learning and I'm going to go to, um, did they post it? Oh, I put it in here. The innovative digital learning webinar series. So let me drop this in here. So our technology, we have a lot of people who are focused on understanding of technology at the county office. Um, and so one of the things that they're doing is um, having daily webinars via Zoom. 
And so this might be a way, here's Canvas for distance learning for administrators. Um, using Zoom, uh, communicate to collaborate. And so um, there are some blank spots in next week, but the following week is really filling up quickly. So um, you'll see that throughout next week, we have um, workshops that are available through, through Zoom, um, but to better understand um, some of those. Our ed tech team, let's do ed tech -o Tuesday. So our educational technology team has a fun um, weekly webinar series normally called Ed Techo Tuesdays. Uh, and so they've expanded the offerings um, and they have office hours, three hours a day from nine to 12, where you can join them and ask them questions about anything ed tech related. And they are huge on Google. So here's, um, this is this morning that they put this on. So the slide deck's here and they'll probably post the video as soon as they can get the transcript finished. Um, you can see their communication to students one from earlier this week and educational continuity. Um, so these are great resources. And I'll also say, Eileen, um, if you as a district choose something and you would like either them or myself um, to do a district specific webinar or have, um, you know, some kind of district specific training. I think that's something that we'd all be very open to. So okay. once you do hone in, let us know. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate the help. Yes. Jewel, are you, are you suggesting that we can invite all our colleagues to join in on the, these webinars? A hundred percent, please. Well, I just didn't know what your capacity was. I mean, Grossmont, for example, has a whole lot more teachers than Mountain Empire. Well, and these webinars, Perfect. like, let's say we got 50 people, then I might not have as much Q&A time or, right. you know, we have more Zoom uh, questions where I'd answer them and less us talking to each other. Once you get over 20, it becomes pretty difficult to, to, to do in a, um, it just kind of becomes a better direct instruction than a, than a conversation. But I'll tell you, four days this week i've been open to office hours from one to two and nobody's logged in so i get a lot of work done um but feel free to send people my way you know okay. like i mean if you've got a teacher who's like what do i do and you can just say like oh well go talk to jewel you know <laughs> and and i don't know that i'll have all the answers but um i want people to know that they're not alone and also if i can alleviate some of the pressure um while you're all trying to create um you know make decisions and create um parameters, um, then let me know um, what I can do to help. Have you heard if other districts are having um, negotiations with their teachers unions during this time? Um, from what I do know, this morning the superintendents got together to discuss that particular um, topic uh, after the comment at our CTE leaders network meeting on Wednesday. Um, I went to the CTA website for the state and the lack of any language around um, instruction uh, during this crisis was a clear message that they're not weighing in on it quite yet as a state. Um, and so I think right now, um, you know, that's going to have to be something that is either bargained or, uh, you know, I, I, we acknowledge that there, those could be limitations um, and we're not quite sure yet how that will all play out. But anything okay. I hear, I can let you know. Are you referring to, uh, at Mountain Empire? I, just before I got on your uh, webinar, our superintendent and uh, teacher president put out a joint statement. And I don't know if you're referring to being paid for the rest of the year, that kind of topic, or um, the online distance learning. That, because they spelled it out. But unfortunately, from my perspective, there's still a certain amount of anxiety because April 13th is not what we do after April 13th has not been defined yet. Whether yeah. we're gonna be having classes with students in them or where we're gonna be doing distance learning. So I think until that question is answered, a lot of my anxiety and some of my colleagues share that same anxiety, but uh, they, they spelled out the pay and some of the other issues nicely. It's just this April 13th question or you know, what do you do after the break? Yeah, I think what we are seeing is that oh, was somebody on the phone and had a comment i have one after you guys are done okay um so as far as this goes i think um we are seeing a variety of responses to what 
um, teachers are being asked to do during the response. So it may not be in their contract to provide distance learning. Um, in one district, uh, it has been asked if teachers will get additional money um, in order to provide distance learning uh, instead of regular uh, in-class learning. And so um, luckily the state is um, waiving ADA requirements. And so we're not limited on attendance. This is a state of emergency and that frees up funds to continue to pay educators. That's, that shouldn't be where the concern is. Um, but there are, there are some um, who may consider this to be the kind of state of emergency like when we've had the fires and we didn't work at all. Um, whereas uh, in other areas, it's understood that we do still need to provide learning. And so there will be a, um, you know, there, I, I'm really glad to hear you, Dave, um, talk about that it was released um, with the union um, because the, they should be side by side looking at what the best way to provide education for our students is. Um, and that will be a district by district situation unless a statewide um, mandate of some sort over supersedes that and I don't actually know how that works. Well, my question is because, you know, I shared the resources that you gave us um, the other day. I um, sent an email to all of the teachers, but it was just like if you are looking for information, that kind of thing, but we aren't mandating that any teachers do anything right now. Okay. And so it's not until we're technically going back April 13th before we get some more direction about what that's going to look like. Great. I know in Oceanside, teachers have a schedule that they keep and they have two hours a day to do their own learning. There's two hours a day where they're creating instructional materials and then there's certain hours where they're having learning together. So in some districts, they are expected to, to work right now. And in some districts, it kind of turned into like the fires, like everybody go home, stay safe, and we'll see you when we come back. Um, and now that we are not sure we're coming back, that, that will shift. Um, so it's definitely, there's not one answer. Um, and so um, what my personal, not a, official advice would be, is that for any teacher who is looking forward at this, that this is the time to explore the resources, create um, example lessons or practice creating Zooms, get comfortable with the tools, because even if you do go back to school, those are helpful things to have in your back pocket or to start exploring with your students. Um, in blended learning. Um, and should we be in a situation where we're not going back to school, um, then you'll be ahead of the curve in um, being prepared to provide um, instruction to our students. And then who is, who's on the phone? Hi, my name is Brian. I'm from Santa Barbara County. Oh, hi, Brian. Welcome. Hi. I tried logging in the first 20 minutes to do it online, but I it just never let me in, so I found a number to call, so I just joined that way. Oh, how weird. Okay, I, um, hopefully, hopefully you are, there, there aren't more people out there, um, but this is being recorded, and so um, I will work on making it ADA accessible, and then I will post it on our website. So anyway, sorry, right. go ahead, Brian, okay. did you have questions? Well, I just, I joined in when you were talking about the career spotlight exploration, and um, I just I took a bunch of notes on different things that you're saying. I teach in the Entrepreneurship Academy at San Marcos High School, and just lots of great ideas that you're sharing that I, that I took notes on. So I'm excited for that. Um, I wanted to join next week. It looks like you have Monday through Thursday, and um, wanted to see if, if there's a way I can figure out how I can actually see what you're showing and different things you're referencing. Because I on on the phone is great, but I can't really. Um, see the different things you're talking about. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so if you also want to practice, we can, um, you can always email or maybe join my office hours and we can practice to get you in. Um, okay. And that way, because I do that from one to one to two and then our webinars start at two o'clock. Um, okay. So, so that might work on Monday if you want to log into office hours. Sure. And those are linked also. Um, at the, the bit.ly slash CTE distance, which I, I'm guessing might be how you found me in the first place? I don't know. I mean, it was a CTE document, uh, CTE teachers that- um, The distance learning Tiffany Carson, thing? yeah, Tiffany Carson through Santa Barbara Unified found. And there's a link, it says Friday, March 20th, career ready from a distance from CTE, for CTE teachers from San Diego Office of Education. That's all the information I had. Okay. And when I click on it, it just 
sdcoe.zoom and then it which would kind of loop me i couldn't okay. really get in so they might have registered and then just shared their registration link um maybe if, yeah if you um want to just shoot me an email um okay then and i don't know if you if you're just on the phone uh, my my um spelling is j e w y l dot c l a r k e at S D C. Okay. Oh yeah, I have it right here. S D C O E dot net. Okay. Yeah. So shoot me an email and then we can connect and I can make sure you get the resources that you'd like. Okay, great. I'll send you an email right now and I look forward to talking more next week. Perfect. Thank you. Anyone else have All questions? Right, thank you. We're at the like one hour point, so it feels like a good place to stop unless there's more to talk about. I think I'm good for right now. Is everybody else still there? There's a couple people still here. Yeah, luckily I can okay. see who's here. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you an email and I'll join on um, on Monday. Perfect. All right, okay, everybody. Thanks, Joel, so much. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for joining Thank in. You. And I think the rest of you have my contact information. Uh, let me know if there's anything we can do. Um, feel free to send as many teachers to my webinars as you have. And uh, have a great and safe weekend. Uh, take a little bit of a rest. Uh, you all deserve it. So. Thank, Thank you, Joel. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.